بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين السيد عميد كلية الآداب الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الباقي بدل الناس المحترم الأساتذة الكرام من جامعاتنا العربية والجامعات الأجنبية وجامعتنا الحبيبة المستنصرية الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته تتشرف منصة كلية الآداب بدعوتكم اليوم للمحاضرة الدولية التي تحمل عنوان الدراسات اليابانية عن المسلمين والإسلام قبل عام 1973 تقدمها الأستاذ الدكتور بروفيسور كيكو ساكاي عميد مركز العلاقات للأزمات الدولية جامعة شيبا اليابان Welcome uh, Dr. Sakai. كلمة البداية كلمة الافتتاح يقدمها سيد عميد كلية الآداب الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الباقي بدر. تفضل دكتور الكلمة لكم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحضور الكرام كل بلقبه ومقامه الكريم ضيوف منصة كلية الآداب الدولية نتشرف بمشاركتكم مشاركتكم وحضوركم لهذه المحاضرة الدولية المهمة والتي تمت استضافة البروفيسور كيكو ساكاي عميد مركز العلاقات للأزمات الدولية من جامعة شيبا باليابان وهي تحدث تتحدث عن الدراسات اليابانية عن المسلمين والإسلام قبل عام 1973 أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم وبها وندعو البروفيسور لتقديم هذه المحاضرة فلتتفضل بتقديمها شكرا لكم شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور uh, Yes, uh, Professor Kiko Sakai, the floor is yours You may start okay. now, please Okay, thank you very much uh, Can you see my, uh, my slide? Yeah, yeah, it's clear oh, Okay, that's good Okay, well, this time uh, I'm going to talk about the history of Japanese studies on the Middle East and Islam. And there will be two lectures today and sometimes in July. Uh, today I will talk about uh, Japanese study on the Islam before the Second World War and after that until 1973, so-called oil shock. And when, uh, uh, when Japan has changed its uh, policy toward the Arab countries. So in this period, I will focus on the different, different patterns of the academic trend of the Japanese intellectuals. Well, before I start my lecture, uh, please do understand the development of the modern, modern Japan uh, since uh, uh, 19th century. So here uh, I picked up several events, uh, several uh, uh, important events after the end of the Edo era. So please read if you don't have any uh, the, uh, uh, the enough knowledge about the Japanese history, please read it. It is written in Arabic. Well, uh, you can see my, uh, my slide in Arabic so you can understand what I'm talk talking about. Uh, in the late 19th century, feudal system of Edo era has abolished and the new modern uh, socio-political system was introduced by Meiji uh, reform. Then Japan pursued modernization, uh, westernization, and the industrialization, promoting its military and economy strong. It means that Japan started to join the imperialist group in the West and search for the imperial expansion towards Asia. In this process, in this process, Japan considered that the West is something that Japan should overcome and that the Asia is something that Japan could conquer. This policy was promoted by expansionists in the imperial army, which took power in the government, getting rid of the democratic civilian regime in the 30s. After the Second World War, uh, GHQ, General Headquarter, uh, led by the US Army, occupied Japan and introduced the democratic and the pacifist constitution and the political system. 
Japan lost its autonomy and diplomacy until the middle of 50s, but after 1973, Japan started to take its own way to establish a good relation with Arab countries. In this lecture, I overview how the Japanese intellectuals, especially scholars on the Middle East and Islam, were involved in the pre-war or nationalist policy and were forced to serve for the military expansionism and the colonialization in China and the other Asia. Uh, by the way, please let me know if, if my slide is not clear. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's very clear. Okay, okay. all right. Then let's move to uh, the next slide. Uh, Pre-war, Second World War, Japanese study on the outside world. Japanese academic trend before the Second World War can be categorized into, in, into three patterns. The first was to learn more developed civilization, that is to learn from the West. Mainstream of Japanese intellectuals were in this group who, who pursued the Westernization in its knowledge, departing from Chinese influence. They feared that uh, Japan might have been colonized and exploited as other uh, underdeveloped Asian countries. The second group was to oppose the Westernization and criticize the Western imperialism. Many of them highlighted the authenticity of the Japanese culture and insisted that they shouldn't, should, should not lose, lose the Japanese authentic, authentic culture under Westernization. Among them, some sympathized with weak state, which were colonized and oppressed by the West. The third group was similar to the second group, but they tended to study according to the uh, government expansion, expansionist policy towards Asia. Many of them searched for pan-Asian anti-Western nationalism. They became a tool for military ambition of the Japanese imperialism toward China. The first, we see the case of the first category, pro-Westernization scholars. The most typical case of this category is Yukichi Fukuzawa. He was one of the most prominent intellectual during the beginning of the Meiji era. He was a writer, a teacher, translator, entrepreneur, as well as a journalist. He founded the Keio University in 1858, which is one of the best private university in Japan. He was born into an, an impoverished, uh, low-ranking samurai in the end of the Tokugawa period. He joined the first diplomatic mission to U United States and visited Europe as, as, a, a, yes, a, as a translator of the diplomatic mission in 1862. Based on his experience during his trip, he wrote Seiyo Jijo, of Things Western, and Gakumon no Susume, an encouragement of learning. Through his works, he led cultural and educational modernization in Meiji regime. He was a firm believer that the Western education surpassed the Japanese education, and he pursued to catch up with the West. And as a result of his pro-Western stance, he dismissed Asia in his publication in, of Dats Aron, Escape from Asia in 1885. His stance against the non-Western Asia and Africa was very clear in his memoir uh, of his trip to Egypt. He visited Egypt on his way to Europe and he said, land of Egypt is impoverished and the people there are very dirty and they are, they, they are really disgusting. Its population is half, half a million. Most of them are poor and the urban life is not pro, pro, uh, prosperous. Nature of the people is stubborn, lazy, and least diligent. Legal system there is extremely, extremely harsh. This is the impression of Yukichi Fukuzawa who, who pursued Westernization on Egypt. 
Second group was the although the science was very small and less influential to the police politics during the Meiji era, uh, those who sympathized the uh, situation of the colonized countries. Representative case is San Sanshi Tokai, author of uh, Kajin no Kigu, Fate of Nobu. He was a samurai from Aizu district, which is a pro Tokugawa uh, uh, samurai, and who fought against uh, supporters of Meiji as a child so soldiers. In the last fight of the uh, Edo era, the Boshin War. After the, uh, the defeat of this Boshin War, he studied abroad in the United States and became Secretary of Ministry, Minister of Agriculture and Commerce. The, there he, were, he was lucky enough to travel to, uh, uh, travel to uh, Europe and Egypt in 1986 and 1987 with the Ministry, Minister of Agriculture. In Sri Lanka, he met Ahmed Olabi, an anti-British, anti-colonial leader of Egypt, uh, while he was in exile there. Sanshi was greatly influenced by this meeting, then published the novel of Fate of Nobel. He also visited Egypt and he published a book of modern history of Egypt. This is, uh, this is a book of uh, a modern history of Egypt in Japanese. What is interesting in, in Fate of Nobel uh, is that the hero of this novel shows the great sympathy to the colonized people and he co uh, cooperated with various exiles from Ireland and Spain together, together with Chinese activists and joined anti-colonial independent movement in the various area in the world, including Egypt to support Ahmad Olabi. A third group is ultra nationalist, pan Asianist nationalist during the 1920s and the 1930s. It is represented by the Shumei Okawa, uh, who was a right wing political ideolo ideologue and a pan Asian nationalist. He believed that the clash of civilization between the East and the West was inevitable, and Japan was destined a uh, dis uh, dis uh, destiny to assume the mantle of liberator and the protector of Asia against the United States and the other Western nations. His idea strongly influenced the young military officers who had caused a May 15 a, a coup attempt and February 26 coup attempt. He is also considered as a powerful ideolo ideologue who supported the Japanese military expansion was Asia and Southeast Asia. Thus, he, he prosecuted uh, as an A rank war criminal, uh, which, is, which means a sentence to death in the International Military Tribunal after the Second World War, but he was hospitalized because of his mental illness. His firm anti Western stance uh, made him interested in Islam as he considered that the Muslim society in South Asia and North Africa suffered a lot under the British and French colonialism. In 1922, he published uh, an article of political future of Muslim. And then uh, in 1942, he published Kaikyo Gairon, general remark on Islam. After Second World War, he translated Quran uh, while he was in hospital. He admitted that he could not read Arabic. So his translation was not from Arabic, but from English, French, German, and Chinese. This Japanese translation of Quran was a third translation after Sakamoto and Takahashi. Uh, uh, Okawa is not the first person who translated the uh, Quran. Then how did the Japanese intellectuals respond, respond to above mentioned the shift of the Japanese policy towards outside of the world? Now let's see how the development on the Japanese study on the Muslim was since, was since Meiji reform. 
in order to understand uh, the development of the Islamic studies, we have to see that the, how the relation between Japanese society and the Muslim countries was, was in the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. The knowledge on Islam or Muslim society used to, com used to come to Japan via China before the Meiji era. After Meiji administration encouraged the communication was outside of Japan, some Japanese individuals had chances to meet Muslims from Turkey, India, China, and Russia. In the beginning of the 20th century, Muslims from Russia came to Japan as a political exiles or missionaries. Most of them were Tatar from Central Asia. Among them, Jap um, among these Japanese who converted to, uh, some converted to Islam. In 1920, a Quran was translated by Mr. Sakamoto. In 1935, first mosque was established in Kobe by Indian Muslim. Then uh, it was followed by Tokyo in 1938, uh, which was established by Tatar from Russia. Parallel to these activities by Muslim in, in Japan, religious, cultural, and uh, academic institutions on Muslim and uh, uh, Islam were established since the uh, uh, 1920s. In, to, uh, in 1924, Tokyo Kai Kyodan, Mahale Isra Islamie, a Muslim group in Tokyo, was established by Tatar exile. During the 1930s, more and more research institutions on Islam were established with great support from the Japanese government and the Imperial Army. During 1937 and 1938, Islam Bunka Kyokai, the Association of Islamic Culture, was established and it published. Uh, analytical, analytical report on the political and social situation of Muslim in China, India, and North Africa. Strategic studies on the Muslim society were re required, uh, required, and the Islamic studies department were created both in East Asiatic Commercial Intelligence Institute, which is uh, uh, Toa Keizai Chosakyo, Chosakyoku, headed by Shume Okawa, and in the research office attached to, uh, uh, attached to the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In 1938, uh, uh, Kaikyoken Kenkyujo, Institute of Islamic Area, and Dainippon Kaikyo Kyokai, Greater Japanese Muslim League, were established. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a building of Dai Nippon Kaikyo Kyokai. Yes. And the problem was these institute, uh, uh, institutions were established as a political and strategic tool that reflected the Japanese imperial policy uh, from 1920s to 1945. Islamic institutions were used first to fight against Soviet Union under the leadership of anti-communist Tatar exiles and the Muslim from British India. When the Sino-Japanese uh, Japanese war occurred in 1937, uh, these institutions on Islamic study were used as a method to control China, Southeast Asia, and India. In 1937, several state-led research projects on Islam were launched for the purpose of establishment of Greater East Asia uh, co-prosperity sphere. In short, the Japanese imperial military intelligence tried to, to first uh, strengthen the network with the Muslim from Russia against Soviet Union. Second, mobilizing the Uyghur Muslim against the Chinese authority. Uh, well, that that uh, that means that uh, they try to use Uyghur Muslim as a spy agency for Japanese colonial purpose. And third, 
the colonial, uh, the control of Muslim in the Indonesia and Malaysia under the uh, Japanese occupation for Japanese colonial purpose. Well, for that purpose, uh, the Greater Japanese Muslim League, the, the, the Dai Nippon Kai Kyo Kyo Kai, was founded in 1938. It was significant national policy making and maneuvering organization and uh, the supervision of the Army Ministry, Ministry of Navy, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It was led by Hayashi Senjuro, or yeah, uh, it was led by Hayashi Senju, uh, Senjuro Hayashi, former prime minister and right-wing army general. He was succeeded by Ten, uh, uh, Nobutaka Shinoten later, who was an anti-Jewish military intelligence officer. In the same year, Kaikyoken Kenkyujo, Islamic uh, Institute of Islamic Area, was established by Okubo, uh, Koji Okubo and Hajime Kobayashi, professor at the Army Academy. Uh, although Okubo was a prominent scholar on, on, the, on Turkey, the institute, institute was soon controlled by uh, Zendin Kyokai, spy agency for maneuvering in Mongol. Akira Usuki, the contemporary uh, Japanese scholar on the Middle East studies, describes that the Kobayashi committed to the war and the policies, uh, politics even, uh, even collaborated with the military establishment during the war. Even the, uh, the religious activities among the Muslims were supervised by pan-Asianist imperialist politicians. In the ceremony of foundation of Tokyo Jami, uh, Tokyo Mosque, uh, Mitsuru to Toyama, a very influential right-wing nationalist leader attempted, attended. It was a tragedy, anyhow, uh, for the Institute of, for Institute of Islamic Area to be involved deeply in the imperial, imperial policies and used as a tool for colonial strategy of imperial Japan. However, there were a number of excellent scholars on Islam and Asia in this institute. The most prominent scholar was Toshihiko Izutsu, he was a scholar on the philosophy of Islam, and he translated the Quran into Japanese the first time from Arabic uh, uh, to Japanese. He taught in Canada as a professor of Islamic philosophy at McGill University in Montreal, as well as Imperial Iranian Academy of Philosophy in Tehran. This is a poster of the uh, uh, Iranian Academy of Philosophy on uh, Izutsu. Apart from Izutsu, uh, there was uh, there was a very important scholar and thinker from this institute, although he is not the scholar in Islam. He is Yoshimi Takeuchi. He was a specialized in Chinese studies. He became very critical on the Japanese Great East, uh, East Asian War again uh, after the Second World War. He argued in favor of Mao Zedong uh, and, the, and the Chinese Cultural Revolution. He criticized both Orientalism and Pan-Asianism, saying that rather Orient must be, uh, embrace the West, it must change the West itself in order to realize the latter's understanding cultural values on the greater scale. Such a rollback of the culture uh, or values would create the universality. The audience must uh, change the West in order to further elevate those, those universal values that West itself produced. So he considered that the uh, pre-war Japan as well as Orientalist, Orientalism in the West uh, should be criticized. Anyway, defeat of the Second World War destroyed and gave a tremendous damage to the Japanese study on Islam and the Muslim. The partly because the above mentioned institutions were either destroyed because of the war or because of the scholars related to these institutions became disparate 
and lost their enthusiasm for study on Islam after the war. Institute, Institute of Islamic Area was burned by the massive air raid in 1945. The Greater Japanese Muslim League uh, was abolished after the Second World War. Thus, Japanese academism suffered from the uh, serious gap between pre-Second World War studies on Islam and post-war studies. However, Hajime Kobayashi, a founder of the member of the uh, found, founding member of the Institute of Islamic Area, area established Chuto Chosakai, a Middle, East, a Middle East Institute of Japan, as a research institute attached to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs after the Second World War. In 19, uh, uh, yeah, in 1963, uh, Nihon Islam Kyokai Association of Islamic Studies in Japan was established as a new organization to promote a study on Islam. This is not related to the former Dainippon uh, uh, Islam Kyokai. As for Japan, uh, Japan's diplomatic relations with the Muslim countries after the Second World War, especially in the Middle East, it was prohibited to establish its bilateral ties until 1952 because Japan was under the US occupation until that time. After general headquarters control was over in, 2000, uh, in 1952, uh, it started to recover the diplomatic relation with the countries in the Middle East, with Egypt in 1952, with Iran and Syria uh, in 1953, with Iraq and Saudi Arabia in 1955. However, there were the obstacles for Japan to start a direct trade with uh, the oil producing country in the Middle East, because at that time, with the Western cartel of the seven transnational oil companies, so-called majors or so-called seven sisters, dominated the global petroleum industry. Despite very difficult situation under the political pressure from the US and the UK, uh, there were several attempts to import oil directly from the Middle East or to explore, explore the oil field. The first attempt was so-called Nishomal case in 1953, when Idemitsu Oil Company, one of the, uh, the biggest uh, oil company in Japan, tried to buy crude oil from Iran under Mossadegh. At that time, Iran was in conflict with Britain because it nationalized its oil. Idemitsu secretly sent Nishomal uh, to, to Iran in order to buy, uh, the oil, uh, buy its oil, Iranian oil, directly. The ship returned to Japan with a 22,000 kiloliter of gasoline and was welcomed by many Japanese people. Anglo-Iranian oil company got very angry and filed a, a su su suit against Idemitsu in Tokyo District Court. Official website of Idemitsu company said that this incident uh, this incident pioneered direct transaction with oil producing countries and triggered the Japanese to turn their eyes to the Middle East. Actually, this story, uh, Nishomal case, the story of the Nishomal case, Nishomal, uh, case uh, became the kind of the movie uh, very recently, and this is a poster from that film, all in Japanese, unfortunately. The second attempt was the cons conclusion of the concession agreement with Saudi Arabia in 19, uh, 1957. Japan Oil Export Company, renamed as Arabian Oil Company later, discovered gigantic oil field in Kafji in 1960 under, the, under this concession. This company was founded by a, a, a Taro or uh, Yamashita, who struggled to acquire oil resources for the construction of post-war uh, post Japan. He started the business in his 20s before the Second World War, 
or and work for Manchuria Railway. Yeah, this is his uh, uh, biography, and this is a picture of uh, 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 Taro Yamashita with uh, the kings in of Saudi Arabia at the time. And uh, uh, the latter uh, 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 the picture below is the uh, Kuwaiti Amir and this uh, Taro Yamashita. Well, it is interesting for the uh, interesting fact that both Idemitsu and the Yamashita had estab established their business career in Manchuria Railway. Actually, this Manchuria Railway before the Second World War is very, was very, very important for the Japanese imperial policy, but uh, uh, also it uh, recruited a lot of intellectuals uh, at that time. Uh, well, uh, 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 so uh, they uh, they established the, their business career in Manchuria Railway during the period of imperial regime, uh, before and uh, during the Second World War. In a way, they they have succeeded the cosmopolitan sense of business network in Asia from this imperial Japan. The last case. Uh, last case is the uh, 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 last case of the Japanese ef effort to establish its own business network with Middle Eastern countries is that with Iran. Uh, in 1973, Iran Japan Petrochemical was established for construction of the petrochemical uh, plant in a plant in Bandar Shapur, now uh, currently uh, currently uh, 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 Bandar Abbas in Iran, according to the basic joint venture contract in 1971. IJPC, Iran-Japan Petroleum Corporation, was a large-scale petro petrochemical uh, complex, a joint venture between Japan and Iran, Iran and the Shah. 50% uh, 50, 50 yeah, a fifty percent stake between Iran's state-owned petrochemical company and Mitsui Central Consortium, supported by the Japanese government and Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Actually, Mitsui Company is one of the uh, the biggest um, a, 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 the commercial company in Japan still. Unfortunately, it stopped because of the Iranian Revolution in 1979 and Iraq-Iran Iraq -Iran war uh, during the 1980 to 1988. Then it was finally canceled in 1989. So this is a grand picture of this uh, uh, Iran-Japan Petro Petrochemical Corporation, uh, uh, the complex, and there are many Japanese workers uh, used to work there. Despite some, despite of some, although small, progress in the business cooperation uh, and academic activities on the Middle East were late to recover in Japan. We had to wait until the, uh, uh, until the Ramadan War in 1973, when the Japanese government took a pro-Arab policy, searching for the support from oil, uh, Arab oil producing countries. So I will discuss the further development after the 1973 so-called oil shock in the next lecture in July. So uh, that is uh, uh, my uh, end of my lecture. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Professor Sakai, for this uh, interesting lecture. Uh, now, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Professor Mahmoud Al Qaisi uh, with us. Uh, you can unmute yourself, Professor. Ahlan wa sahlan, Dr. Mahmoud. Sharafna wa tahiyatna wa taqdirna wa ahtiramna li hadura kitirim. نعم دكتور محمود الآن المايك متاح لكم شكرا جزيلا دكتور شرف حضورك المحاضرة وأهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بك دكتور أولا طبعا عاجزين عن الشكر لكلية الآداب جامعة المستنصرية على هذا التعاون المثمر مع 
جامعة تشيبا ومع كلية العلوم السياسية والقانون كلية القانون والسياسة والاقتصاد في جامعة تشيبا وسعداء لهذا التعاون المشترك يعني بين جامعة بغداد وبين الجامعة المستنصرية وهذا الاحتضان المستمر من عندكم لهذه النشاطات اللي نتمنى يعني أن تستمر بشكل كبير جدا طبعا الأسبوع الماضي كان لقاء رائع بين طلبة المرحلة الأولى والمراحل الأولية في الجامعة المستنصرية وجامعة بغداد كلية الآداب وجامعة شيبا والطلاب طبعا جدا استمتعوا بهذا النشاط وطلاب اليابانيين تفاعلوا بشكل كبير جدا مع طلابنا العراقيين وبنفس الوقت I would like to thank Professor Sakai from Chiba University for all this support of our project and also for the Ustad Ahmed Al Ajli from Kyushu University. شكرا جزيلا دكتور. شكرا دكتور عبد الباقي. شكرا دكتور مهند. شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور ونرحب أيضا بالمترجم أستاذ أحمد أحمد العجيلي أهلا وسهلا بكم أستاذ شكرا جزيلا أهلا وسهلا أستاذ أهلا وسهلا بكم زملائنا الأعزاء نفتح باب المداخلات والأسئلة إن شاء الله يعني تعطفون الآلية برفع اليد اللي عنده مداخلة أو سؤال نعم زملائنا إذا توجد أسئلة أو مداخلات معنا المترجم أستاذ أحمد يترجم لي دكتورة أحمد محمد عدنا دكتور نعم أحمد تفضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام شكرا لكليتنا العزيزة كلية الآداب وشكر لسيد العميد وشكر الجزيل للبروفيسور على هذا الطرح التاريخي حقيقة أنا لدي سؤال يعني إذا الأستاذ المترجم يعني أستاذ أحمد هناك قصة ملحمية يعني أنا عندما أقرأ هذه القصة هي يعني أحيانا يعتقد الإنسان أنها قصة يعني من سجل الخيال للرجل المصري اسمه محمد علي الجرجاوي في عام 1905 سمع بأن هناك دعم من الإمبراطور الياباني لعقد مؤتمر الأديان في اليابان بعد انتصار اليابان على روسيا في المعركة أصبحت اليابان قوة كبيرة فكان هناك يعني دعم من الامبراطور لجمع الاديان من المذاهب فسمع هذا الرجل وكان صحفيا لديه جريده فقرر ان يبيع اراضيه في مصر في صعيد مصر ويسافر الى اليابان في رحله ملحميه واجتمع هناك بشخصيات اسلاميه من الدوله العثمانيه ومن روسيا ومن الصين والتقى بامبراطور اليابان ويقال أنه قد أستمع على أيديهم الكثير من اليابانيين يعني عدد أعتقد العدد المبالغ فيه حوالي 12 ألف شخص ثم عاد هذا الرجل وألف كتاب رحلة اليابان عام 1907 هذه القصة يعني متداولة كثيرا لا أدري إذا كانت البروفيسورة لديها معلومة عن هذه المسألة هي الصحيحة وفي ال وثائق اليابانية هذه القصة مسجلة هي قصة خيالية وشكرا جزيلا لكم شال I translate it's okay نعم so, نعم uh, thank you so much so uh, that was question from uh, Mr Ahmed Muhammad he was uh, asking about uh, uh, legendary uh, story talking about uh, uh, a guy from Egypt, his name is Muhammad Ali Jarjawi, in 1905. 
uh, he heard about uh, invitation from the emperor of Japan at that time to make a conference for the religions, for the, the whole religions around the world hosted by Japan. And uh, especially Japan became a superpower after the Japanese-Russian uh, war. So he, he was uh, uh, land holders and he started uh, selling his lands and he went to, he traveled to Japan just to attend this conference. And also he met the emperor of Japan and they said that uh, also he, he did a part of spreading Islam among the Japanese people, like around uh, 12,000 people have been converted to Islam. And he wrote a book about that. He called the book Rahlat uh, al-Yaban, the, the travel of Japan in 1907. So Mr. Ahmed asking uh, Professor Sakai, uh, do you have some information about that kind of uh, story or it is, uh, he's wondering whether it is um, like fake story or just a true story. Is there any records or documents have been mentioned in the Japanese history about that? He's interested to know about it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Well, yes. Uh, well, I, as far as I understand, yes, this is true, and it is. Uh, well, I sent the uh, the URL to uh, all the audience uh, uh, URL of the Islamic Center in Japan. Uh, this center is organized by uh, the one at the uh, or, 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 or the Muslim Muslim uh, the, the uh, Islamic leader of. Uh, uh, from from Iraq, Samarai, and uh, uh, he wrote the short history of um, uh, I'm gonna say uh, communication between the Japan and the uh, uh, Middle uh, the Middle East or Islamic uh, the, uh, the Muslim societies, and to uh, o o o o yes um. Uh, so uh, I think that that story is very uh, very true. But uh, 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 the relatively speaking, the influence of uh, 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 influence of Islam in Japan was mainly through India and Russia and China. And uh, very few Egyptian, like uh, this uh, uh, Muhammad Jarjawi, uh, was active uh, in promoting the uh, uh, promoting the Islam in Japan. But uh, uh, well, uh, the influence was much much stronger uh, from uh, Russian Tatari uh, 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 Muslims. So please take a look at uh, uh, this uh, uh, URL. Uh, Islamic Center of Japan. Uh, okay, thank, thank you so much. You. Can I translate it to Arabic? Yes, yes, Professor. Uh, okay, okay. Yes. thank you. Uh, Ustaz uh, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Muhammad, uh, Ustaz Ahmed, 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 هو برئاسة دكتور صالح سامرائي هو من العراق وهو كتب عن حوار بين حوار الأديان بين اليابان والدين الإسلام والمسلمين هذه القصة حقيقية هي سمعت بها أيضا هذه القصة بس تأثير الإسلام في اليابان بشكل عام إجا أكثر شيء من خلال الصين وروسيا والهند وخاصة من المسلمين التتار الروس وأيضا كان له تأثير السيد محمد الشرجاوي من مصر ولكن تأثيره قليل مقارنة بتأثير الهند والصين وروسيا شكرا جزيلا شكرا لكم دكتور المداخلة الآن مع الأستاذ الدكتور محمود القيسي تفضل دكتور محمود نعم دكتور محمود الكلمة لكم الآن Thank you, Dr. Mohamed. Sakai Sensei, thank you so much for your interesting lecture. I have two short questions. The first, is it right the Japanese newspaper used the term Kaiko 2 to describe the Muslims, especially before the Second World War and especially in the 50s and 60s? 
the second question about the uh, the situation of Iraq in Japanese studies uh, before the oil shock of 1973. Uh, what is the uh, information about the Iraq uh, in this Japanese studies of Middle East uh, before the uh, oil shock of uh, 1973? Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. As for uh, 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 Dr. Mahmoud, uh, Dr. Mahmoud mentioned that the Japanese used to call Muslim as Kaikyoto. So Kaikyo means we go. Uh, well, uh, uh, kai, uh, well, uh, I, I, <laughs> it is very difficult to explain in uh, uh, the how to write in, in the Japanese characters, but uh, uh, Kaikyo means, Kyo means uh, religion. And Kai means uh, uh, the name of the ethnic group in China. That is Uyghur, the, the part of the Uyghur or ethnic group. And they were called Fifi. And Fifi, Fifi means Kai. Mm. Then, so, yeah. the, so that means that the Japan consider that the Muslim are from this ethnic group in China. So uh, that's why I say that the Japanese knowledge about Muslim or Islam was mainly from China. So that 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 mean that mean that they 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 uh, keep on calling calling Muslim as Kaikyo, as, uh, using the name of this ethnic group in China. Is it? Uh, 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 is okay. it okay for you? Yeah, as for the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, as for the first question, yes. Um, the second. Uh, but, uh, by the way, uh, so uh, the I don't know why, but the Japanese people you uh, 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 keep on using this term kaikyo, uh, instead of Islam or Muslim, uh, until nine uh, about 1970s. And uh, I, I don't know that it, uh, was there a lot of criticism against against uh, usage of the term kaikyo because the, the Islam or Muslim is not only for the this ethnic group in China but uh, this is the uh, the universal religion. So the, there's a lot of debate that we should change the term from kaikyo to Islam, but uh, uh, mainly because the journalistic uh, 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 purpose uh, they try to use. Uh, kaikyo, uh, they, they, they keep on use the term kaikyo instead of Islam, very simply because of the, uh, how can I say, links of the term. Kaikyo is only two letters in Japanese. Oh. And uh, Islam, <laughs> four letters. This is very, very stupid, stupid reason, but this is very serious for the journalists because they wanted to put all the, all the information in, in, in one sentence. Okay, so they, they, they prefer to use a shorter term for Islam. So this is, this, this is very, very stupid, it's a stupid reason that the Japan, Japan uh, keep on using this very old fashioned term of kaikyo. Uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the answer to the first question. And the second, uh, to, uh, the answer to the second question about uh, the Iraq, you know better. You know better than me. And uh, as for the relation between Japan and the Iraq before the Second World War, uh, you know that the Japan used to uh, import uh, 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 the textile, textile yeah. and uh, 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 yeah, mainly textile from uh, from Mosul or uh, mainly the cotton. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Japan used to import more from Iraq, uh, so this is one of the one of the uh, the can I say uh, feature the, uh, of Japan Iraq uh, relation before the Second World War. War and the second and the another another uh, factor of Japan Iraq relation is that uh, uh, well I haven't checked yet, but uh, uh, there there was a kind of the influence from the Japanese imperialist ultra military, uh, ultra nationalistic military uh, uh, sought to Iraq via Germany. Because there is a lot of uh, German ideologue or German thinkers who had a lot of influence to, uh, to Iraqi military officers, right? 
before the Second World War, right? So uh, I heard, I, I, I read one, of the, one article saying that the, well, uh, some Iraqi military officers knew uh, the idea of Japan imperialist idea through this German thinkers, but I haven't checked it now. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Sakai. Ustad uh, Ahmed, if you can give us a translation of a complete translation. Okay. The question, Dr. Mahmoud, was a question for Dr. Sakai. In terms of the Japanese media, is it still a term for Kai Koto before the Second World War II on the Muslims? And the second question is that the Iraq, the influence of the Iraq on the Muslim people. في سنة 1973 ما هو تأثير العراق على اليابان خلال صدمة النفط؟ فجواب الدكتورة ساكاي كان أنه مصطلح الكاي كوكو هو كان يطلق على الأويغر والأويغر هم أقلية مسلمة موجودة في الصين فيعتقدون اليابانيين بأنه الإسلام إجا من الصين فأصبح مصطلح عام على كل شخص مسلم يسموه كاي كو وهو فهي تذكر الدكتورة ساكاي أنه سبب سخيف ربما نوعا ما أو غبي أنه الصحافة استخدمتها وظلت تستخدمها لحد السبعينات بسبب أنه يستخدم من أربع حروف فقط حرفين فقط عفوا باللغة اليابانية بينما في اللغة العربية يستخدم من أربع حروف إسلام كلمة إسلام فلهذا اختصروها أنه كايكو كل شخص مسلم هو كايكو والجواب السؤال الثاني كان أنه دكتورة ساكاي قالت أنه العلاقات العراق واليابان قبل الحرب العالمية الثانية كان اليابان كانت تستورد المنسوجات من الموصل والمواد القطنية خاصة من من العراق فأيضا هنالك حقيقة أخرى ولكن ليست متأكدة منها لحد الآن ما ما هل هي صحيحة أم لا أنه الضباط العسكريين العراقيين في تلك الفترة كانوا متاثرين بالضباط بالفكر الالماني وعن طريق الالمان يعني اخذوا بعض الافكار عن الجيش الامبراطوري الياباني او الجيش الامبريالي الياباني في تلك الفتره ولكن هذه الحقيقه ما متاكدين منها لحد الان وشكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا لكم نعم زملائنا مستمرين معكم والمداخلات كثيره لكن نعتذر عن الوقت بدا يداهمنا ناخذ مداخله دكتور ماهر تفضل دكتور ماهر السلام عليكم عليكم السلام شكرا جزيلا دكتور مهند على سماحك الفرصه للتكلم بهذه الندوه المهمه تحياتي دكتوره كيكو ساكاي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ايفري ثينك وي لوست يو حقيقه سؤال عن الشخصيات الثلاث المؤس... يعني يقولون المناظرين او المفكرين الثلاثه الذين ذكرتهم في البدايه لتاسيس الفكر الياباني الحديث بوكيتشو بوكو زاوا وسايشي توكاي وشومي اوكاوا مراجعه لهذا الثلاثه لما راجعت افكارهم وجدت انه شومي اوكاوا هو قومي متطرف مؤيد للوحده الاسيويه حسب ما الوصف فهل هو هل هذا كان يعني عكس بوكيتشو فوكوزاوا وتوكاي كان اكثر تطرفا واكثر تعصبا نحو الوحده الاسيويه يعني هاي العقيده العسكريه اليابانيه اللي بنت قبل الحرب العالميه الثانيه معتمده على هذا المفكر لوحده شومي اوكاوا هل كانت كان هذا المنظر الوحيد لهذه العقيده وانتشرت افكاره أم كان هناك آخرين لهم نفس الحدة في هذه الأفكار شكراً جزيلاً لكلية الآداب والمنصة الإلكترونية وشكراً دكتور مهند على هذه الفرصة شكراً جزيلاً لكم دكتور ماهر نعم أستاذ دكتور أحمد ممكن الترجمة نعم. تمام so, دكتور ماهر أسك about the three uh, figures that you have been mentioned, uh, Sensei, about you in your presentation, the thinkers, the Japanese thinkers, uh, Fukuzawa Yokichi, Tokai, and uh, Ogawa. So he was asking, he was wondering whether Ogawa, Ogawa you mentioned that he was a uh, nationalist and he was 
uh, strict a person, very for time uh, unified with the Asian countries. So he he asking about the the military thoughts of the Japanese imperialism army. Does it based on the thoughts of Ogawa himself only, or based on other? Japanese thinkers, and was was uh, he the only one have been supported by the government at, uh, at that time, or some of them they were taking uh, the thoughts of uh, the other people like Fukuzawa and uh, Ogawa. They took into consideration about the th thoughts of the other Japanese thinkers. So that was the question of Mr. Maha. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, uh... You know that the Fuku Yukichi Fukuzawa was in Meiji era. So uh, in the end of 19th century until the beginning of the, uh, uh, the 20th century. But the Okawa Shume was the beginning, the, the, the person who, who was active in the beginning of the 20th century. So the, the period is a little bit different. And uh, the, the while Fukuza Yukichi Fukuzawa was very active, well, the Japanese policy was 100% pro-Western and westernization. So you know, Fukuza, Yukichi Fukuzawa was a kind of the mainstream at that time. And then gradually Japanese policy turn, uh, uh, will become, uh, 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 I can say, how to overcome the West and the anti-Western and the competing, uh, competing with the uh, West. And then uh, they uh, become, uh, uh, can I say, started to crash with the US and the European countries in the, in the in the thirties uh, of twentieth uh, century, uh, so Oka, yes, you are right. Okashima is one of the uh, uh, the most influential ideologue in Japan, but he is not only the person who influenced the military policy in Japan. Well, there is a number of uh, Japanese ultranationalists at the time, and uh, many uh, intellectuals like uh, Kitaiki or uh, uh, others, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, Toyama Mitsuru. Uh, Mitsuru Toyama is uh, uh, the kind of the boss uh, leader of the uh, the uh, rightest wing in Japan at the time. So, uh, 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 well, basically, uh, well, Okashume and others become the kind of the uh, the mainstream of the Japanese intellectual at the, at that time. Thank Can you I, so much. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, thanks so much. So, so uh, start the. Uh, Maher Al Khalil, Jawaban Li Soal Hadartik, Min Doctor Sakai, Gul and who fell in and who Shasiat, Tarata Mufakrin, the Karat from Hadartik, Walakin Sebab and who Fukuza, Yukichi, Kan Muath, Kan Fi Fetra, Zamania Muhtelifa, and Ogawa. Nathan Fukuza, Yukichi, Kan Fi Asar Meji. Where Okawa is a bad Asar Meji, he died in the Karn and Oshreen. The Fetra Zamania cannot be tell if a bean at him. Focus our Yukichi by then, who can Muether Bishakri for Alfi, Siasa Yabani or Harjia, Yen who can Munasar the Gar, where Siasa Harjia Yabani, if he took the Fetra, cannot Moeid, the cannot Halifa the Gar, while he had a cannot Ara. تلقى يعني حظوا كبيرا وترحيبا من قبل السياسيين اليابانيين وهو لم يكن الشخص الوحيد يعني المؤثر في السياسة الخارجية اليابانية يعني أفكار الفلسفية يوجد أشخاص آخرين مثل كيتا إيكي وتوياما ميتسوري هم أيضا لعبوا دور أساسي في إنجاح اليمين الجناح اليميني في اليابان في تلك الفترة شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور المداخلة الآن مع دكتورة نور العبدل نعم دكتورة نور فقط افتح المايك لطفا السلام عليكم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله العفو أنا يعني السؤال إن شاء الله يكون مختصر يعني لأن الوقت أكيد يعني ما بعد وقت فسؤالي مختصر للأستاذ الدكتورة يعني حتما هي طلعت على الكتابات المستشرقين والأوروبيين اللي كتبوا عن العالم العربي بصورة عامة والمسلمين والإسلام بصورة خاصة فما هو تقييمها ونظرتها لهذه الكتابات وهل يعني وجدت فيها بعض المغالطات وأيضا تزييف لبعض الحقائق فيما يخص الإسلام والمسلمين والعالم العربي بصورة عامة فهذا يعني سؤالي إن شاء الله يعني وشكرا 
شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور نون نعم دكتور احمد تفضل نعم تمام oh. Uh, so uh, the question of uh, Dr. Noor Al-Abdali, uh, she was uh, asking about, uh, does uh, Professor Sakai, uh, uh, first she thanks, thanks you for your presentation, and does, did, you, did you have a look out on some of the works of the European and uh, the people who are influenced of the uh, Islams and the Arab uh, ideas and history? Their wrote and what they what they wrote on their books about Islam about Arab what, what, was it biased or was it within Arabs and Muslims or do you think there was a fake news about the Arabs and Muslims what is your uh, evaluation for those works what do you think? Mm, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I I couldn't catch it very well. Uh, Ahmad, could you? So Mm. So, so just just your opinion, since uh, about the works about or the books have been written by the uh, Europeans at, at uh, in different time about Arabs, the re Europeans and yeah. uh, the people who are interested about the Middle East studies, the Arab studies, the Islamic studies. What oh, do you yeah, think okay. from your point oh, yeah. of view? Did yeah, you okay. think they are biased or they are against Arabs ah. or what, what, what's kind of? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm sure that they are biased. Of course, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you know that. Well, uh, I, well, I, well, uh, uh, the so-called Orientalist, uh, very much Orientalist. biased. Orientalist, yes. and, uh, yeah, because it was they, they had they had the same same purpose. I mean, the the, the West uh, tried to conquer or try to dominate the Middle East or dominate the the Muslim societies. So the, all the knowledge they wanted to use or they, uh, they, they got from the, from the Middle East is for that purpose. So the, uh, the, from the beginning, their, their uh, purpose or their, their uh, aim is biased according to the Western interest. This is Orientalist. But uh, uh, currently, well, nowadays, well, uh, there is a new generation among the Western Western scholars who are very critical against the oriental Orientalism. Uh, well, mainly after the 1970s uh, or 80s, like uh, uh, like Edward Said or other uh, the scholars who are very much influenced uh, the young generation, the young generation of the Western scholars. So um, uh, I noticed that some 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 very uh, uh, good scholars in the in the in the West who uh, did very good uh, uh, the work on uh, uh, the Islam and the Muslim world. But uh, uh, let's see, mm, yeah. Well, of course, we cannot we cannot avoid any bias. Okay. I don't. I don't know whether they, do, do I answer to, to her yes, question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lucy. Uh, so, answering on the question, Dr. Noor Al Abdali, Dr. Sakai said, "Well, in fact, the Muslims were with the books, with the Arabic and with the books that are related to the Arabic world and the Middle East, and the Middle East, and the Middle East, and the Middle East." لأنهم متأثرين بالفكر العربي وبالفكر الإسلامي وخاصة الجيل الجديد من الأساتذة في فترة السبعينات والثمانينات يعني يعني بالعالم العربي يعني تأثروا أيضا بكتابات أدوارد سعيد وعدد من المفكرين العرب وكانت رسالتهم دائما أنه في صالح العالم العربي والعالم الإسلامي هذا كان جواب دكتور سكا شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور وشكرا جزيلا لكل من حضر معنا ونعتذر من زملائنا الأساتذة اللي يودون المشاركة لأنه الحقيقة الوقت يعني أخذنا كلمة الختام مع السيد عميد كلية الأداب الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الباقي بدر الناصر تفضل دكتور الكلمة لكم شكرا دكتور مهند وشكرا للحضور الكريم كل بلقبه ومقامه الكريم من كل الجامعات العراقية شكرا لكلية الأداب جامعة بغداد إلى الأستاذ الدكتور محمود القيسي المحترم والإنسان المميز والرائع حقيقة والمتابع علميا ومعرفيا لهذا التواصل الثقافي والمعرفي وباسم عمادة كلية الأداب الجامعة المستنصرية 
نتقدم بشهادة تقديرية للبروفيسورة ممزوجة بالمحبة والاحترام والتقدير لهذه الجهود الكبيرة ولهذه المحاضرة القيمة نتمنى أن نلتقي بالدكتورة حقيقة في محاضرات قادمة ونتمنى أيضا المزيد من أواصر التعاون العلمي والثقافي مع اليابان عبر نافذة كلية الآداب جامعة بغداد متمثلة بالأخ الأكرم الدكتور محمود المحترم وكل نشاطاته العلمية والثقافية دعما للمعرفة والثقافة في العراق وكذلك شكر والتقدير والاحترام للدكتور علاء العامري لإسهامه في هذه المحاضرة وكذلك للأخ الأستاذ المترجم على الجهود الطيبة والكريمة وهذه المشاركة الرائعة والمحترمة من قبله وكل الشكر وكل التقدير وكل الاحترام لجميع من شرفونا هذا اليوم في هذه المحاضرة المميزة حقيقة والرائعة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم دكتور أحمد ممكن ترجم ما قال السيد العميد للدكتور ساكاي لطفا آه نعم uh, so دكتور ساكاي uh, Mr. Dean Dean of College of Arts he thanks uh, for your uh, interesting presentation and for all of the attendance that uh, it was really interesting uh, workshop and in the name of the of the Faculty of Arts he, they are honored to Give, to give uh, Sakai Sensei a certificate of uh, participation in the name of Baghdad University. Thank you so much. And we are we hope to strengthen the ties of uh, knowledge between Iraq and Japan in the future and looking forward to see everybody in the upcoming conferences and workshops. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me let me uh, give you one word. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, uh, excellent conference, and uh, uh, I'm very glad to have your uh, opinion and the questions. And I'm sorry that uh, we 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 I, I I couldn't I couldn't receive all of the questions. I I need to answer your questions. Um, Actually, uh, the, what what uh, Dr. Ala told me is that I will give two presentations, two lectures uh, to Muslim City University, and this is the uh, first part of my lecture about the Japanese study on the Islam and the Middle East. So I stopped at the 1973, but the next time, well, hopefully I, I, I'm going to uh, arrange the date and the time with Dr. Ala, uh, but uh, uh, it, it will be uh, sometime in July. And uh, the, in the second part of my lecture will be about uh, uh, the contemporary Japanese, Japan, uh, the, uh, contemporary uh, 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 tendency of the Japanese study on the, uh, on the uh, Middle East. East and Islam, and also Japanese diplomacy it was the Middle East uh, from 1973 to uh, current situation. So I hope that we can I, I can I can see all of you in the second lecture, and uh, uh, hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Professor uh, Sakai. Naam, Dr. Ahmed, if you can Dr. Sakai, thank you very much for the presentation. ومقدرة جدا حضوركم السيدات والسادة جميعا وتعتذر أنه لم تستطع الإجابة على أسئلة الجميع بسبب ضيق الوقت وتقول أنه الحقيقة دكتور علاء بلغها أنه المفروض كان اليوم محاضرة يعني تكون للجامعة المستنصرية فلهذا اقتضى الضرورة أنه يتم تأجيل المحاضرة الثانية إلى شهر تموز من هذا العام راح تكون على صدمة النفط في العالم العربي والعلاقات لعام 1973 والعلاقات الدبلوماسية ما بين الدول العربية واليابان فتتطلع إلى رؤية الجميع حتى ذلك الوقت وشكرا جزيلا لكم شكرا جزيلا لكم دكتور أحمد شكرا للسيد عميد كلية الأداب شكرا للأستاذ الدكتور محمود القيسي شكرا لجميع من حضر معنا هذا اليوم Thank you so much, Professor Kiko Sakai, for this interesting lecture. I hope to see you again uh, in July. I will be there, inshallah. Uh, thank you so much again. أعزائنا الأساتذة نلتقي وإياكم إن شاء الله في محاضرات 
قادمة دمتم بأمان الله مع السلامة Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye.